Welcome back to the North American LCS Spring Playoffs. You're looking at Team Impulse a short time ago, huddled up and preparing to rebound in Game 3. We'll see if they can regain the momentum in Game 3 of Team Impulse versus Team Solo Mid. And what we were touching on before the break was synergy in picks for Team Impulse because they seemed a little disjointed coming through that Champion Select of Game 2. Yeah, and in the first game, which I felt they were wildly successful, they had Nunu with Shivana and Sivir, where you have two good Blood Bowl targets and a really, really strong split push start with Shivana that keeps TSM from getting vision and getting the picks that they want that you saw in game two, where they're going for charms, they're going for hooks, they're getting a lot of pick and poke because they're able to group up, get vision, and do what they want to do. So I would like to see TIP have more synergy than they had in game two in picks so they can keep TSM a lot more disjointed and have their comp make a lot more sense. Yeah, and I also want them to drop the Casio ban for the Gragas and throw off the synergy of TSM's comp because TSM, when they run frontliners, they have a lot of success. And that's kind of the bane of TIP that we've been seeing is if they have people up in their face who are going to soak their damage, they don't fare very well in the team fights. TSM success. We've talked a lot about Bjergsen, Wild Turtle, Santorin. But let's remember, to the other two members of the team, Lustboy and Dyrus, and what their roles are when it comes to success in this Best of Five series. Yeah. Lustboy had been controlling the vision immensely that game. His hooks, his, he was the person starting most of the fights for them off of those skill shots, and he allowed them to play those pick games and the baits that they were pulling off later on when they were dancing between pink words and they were out-rotating TIP. So he just needs another repeat performance. Wasn't broken, don't fix it for this next game. Yeah, and just going off that, I, I just feel like TIP needs to play what they did to win and force TSM to show that they can beat it. I mean, TSM hasn't even shown that they can defeat the uh, comp that they're running in Game 1, so why would you change anything? In Game 3, I fully expect them to go back to their Game 1 roots. All right, well, as we send it over to the casters, Team Impulse will have to shake off that last game, and their coach, Fly, says he does his best to keep the team morale up. A morale definitely very important. We've seen many teams crumble after their first loss or the first two losses, and Team Impulse certainly, we've seen how good they can be as a team bouncing back. Definitely big for these guys. Yeah, I want to see how they adjust to this one. Just we saw the guys talking on the desk. I know that they did win with the Nunu Shivana double jungle in the first game. I don't think Rush is going to play Nunu again. I don't think he likes that champion. I think he was playing it for the power. He, the, because it didn't work, it gives him a perfect excuse to go back on to something like Lee Sin, that he played against TSM in both of the regular season games and will allow higher pressure, more aggressive, risky style from Impulse. Well, it's still going to be this Cassiopeia coming through either way, the uh, risky style, the aggressive style allowed for Team Impulse as they are going to pick up Sivir for themselves, but they do push Dyrus off of Lulu. And they mouse over Rush's favorite champion. Yes, Lee Sin. I, with the first pick of um, the, the Sivir here, though, I think it does open the door back up to the exact strategy that they used in the first game. So now it's up to TSM to actually construct their real answer, their final answer, to the uh, Sivir rushdown with a large frontline comp with a TP smite. Uh, Gragas yeah. is definitely a really big part of that. The, the disengages were huge last game. And we'll see if Santorin can have a repeat performance. Yeah, his Gragas has been exceptional. I it's like, oh, you mean this champion? Yes, I, this yeah, champion. I really like the Lulu ban as well there by Impulse, just to push Dyrus onto something else uh, straight away, even if they were able to kill him early. He just farmed up and was a supporter in the later game fights. <laughs> yeah, true. Got to see what else Dyrus can do in this champion. Lulu seems to work with their... Uh, Lax top focus from TSM, of course, he had held up just fine in the 101 before. Impulse, we want to see what they're able to pick for themselves in this one. Solo mid not showing anything new so far, and they've left both solos up for grabs, so Impulse maybe not wanted to blind pick either of these matchups. Yeah, they're taking their time on yep. these, but yeah, rush back on Lee Sin. Adrian, he had been playing Nautilus pretty well, but one thing we noticed with his Nautilus initiations, the delayed nature of it when it was a telegraphed onto this target and TSM yeah. ran back and then could get disengaged by the Grog Assault. The Leona ult is much faster 
and it's something that Impulse is able to act on. That's one of the main strengths of their team. Yeah. Plus, we saw a couple canceled autos, and Leona, you don't you don't have to cancel because you can Q. It resets your auto. You're going to get the stun yeah. off for melee range. So every split second counts with Team Impulse because they initiate so quickly. Leona does seem like a nice speed upgrade. Yeah, honestly, I think Impulse, this dual lane right here they pick, is the best dual lane I've seen them play as players and as a team overall. This Silver Leona going to be strong. TSM, no Lily Fine will play Maokai, no big deal. Oh. And Wild Throttle playing a new look, looking to win lane with Lucian here. I feel like a Vlad pick in the top lane against Darius' Maokai could be likely. Definitely nope. not. They're going with TM. Oh, oh boy. Here's a strategy that they wanted to run all along since the quarterfinals. Gravity Band puts a fade away every single time. Impulse is going to get that mid lane twisted fate. That's where the Casio Band came through. Flash Ghost already from Xiao Wei Xiao. Switching over very quickly. Let's see how well Impulse use this global map pressure. Not only do they have Twisted Fate uh, to get, create picks, but Sivir can boost up the rest of the team to follow up on those picks. Yeah. So it's not going to just be one pick. They pick somebody off, and then they chase you down for a whole lot more. Rush is going to be jumping around everywhere as well. Like, that is a really scary pressure team composition. It is very much what Impulse is built to do as a team, just from a player perspective, not even a champion perspective, but now the champions fit it too. Thing is, TSM are built to counter this Yep. for mid lane focus. What you do against TF is you attack him early with the jungler. Gragas, even though it's a Cinder Hulk jungler, does have early pressure. So the old Santorin Bjergsen duo, this synergy, that's what needs to come back up for TSM. They need to go back to their roots to try and take yep. down Impulse. Yeah, the LeBlanc Gragas is maybe the scariest duo mid you could have in the game right now. LeBlanc oftentimes, she wins lane because she has such amazing gank assistance. Ganking for that lane is incredibly easy. They can combo off each other so well. Xiaowei Xiao has to be very cowardly in that lane early on, it almost feels like. And this should be, should be a really great matchup. All right, it's going to be a whole bunch of fun. Then Bjergsen looking to disrupt Xiaowei Xiao's twisted fate, a champion. He's only very rarely been allowed to play here in the LCS playoffs. Darius' is second string top lane going to be Maokai. We can see how much that champion pool is tested. And Impact playing a tank for himself in the top lane. It is not Smite on that Gnar up there. And it's going to be a very fun Game 3 series tied up one to one as we go live with this game. Keep us up to date with your predictions. Tweet hashtag TIP winner, hashtag TSM win to at LOL Esports on Twitter. You see the team comps on your screen. Impulse looking to make a lot of very aggressive early game plays. Shalimid looking to disrupt all those guys. Game three and the best of five is coming up. Who's headed to the finals? We're gonna find out in the next two or three games. And oftentimes in these best of five series, you see a team's true colors after a loss. TSM lost in game one, went back to hyper carry back up on Wild Turtle with pressure in the mid lane from Bjergsen Zari. Impulse was switching things up from games one and two, but because they lost, immediately rushed back onto Lee Sin. Adrian back onto Leona and the team looking to make a lot of plays around the map. What do you do when you're down? Immediately return to Comfort Champions. Mm -hmm. Heard that a lot yesterday as well. So this is the first time Impulse not coming out with the same just line of scrimmage start. They're going to run straight into a sapling though, so. All right, Dyrus. It will be deep wards though, because they still have five five uh, characters strong here. So they can make those deep wards that we have not seen so far for the lane swap identification. Hmm. All right. Both wards get seen. Those are always within vision. There's been a ton of mind games between the junglers this series. Santorin and Rush always trying to mess each other up. Last game, we kind of saw the explosion of it. Oh, Apollo. He would be in trouble, but no one's around. It's a heady play by Dyrus there. But also, because of that invade and because of Dyrus' sapling spawn, he can't pull off any cuteness with Maokai early on in the game. A lot of times, Maokai will like to stack saplings, take a camp, hit level two, mm -hmm. especially if he's going to be forced into a lane swap or a difficult 1v1. Well, it looks like as far as lane swaps are concerned, they're going to be almost a 2 on 2 as impact round to the bottom lane, but Apollo says, you know what, we saw Lucian heading up there. Get us out of this lane, and I agree. It's a really tough duel lane to beat for Team Impulse. So they will swap away. 
Impact helps Rush start with red buff, and they can maybe go for their second buff. The enemy blue. This is also a red buff start because Rush knows that the lane swap wards are down, and he doesn't actually want to give away his jungle opening, mm. which he would have if he goes for the Krugs. A very smart stuff there. Well, lane swap is the name of the game. Santori going to walk all the way to the top side of the jungle right away. Does not want to get stolen from. See, there's an interesting choice here for Rush. Does he decide to go the safe route and just go into the strong side of the jungle where they have a ward? Or does he continue the double jungle over into his own blue side and then possibly let, make a move to head off Santorin? Looks like he's going to try and grab up their own blue buff first. Yeah, I would say actually because TSM was not able to meet that top lane wave, this is not the most ideal lane swap formation for Impulse. Since the lane is, I don't think it's freezing up in that top it's, lane perfectly. It's really hard for Santorin to just inherently call this. Oh, Les yeah. looking to make a roam. Okay. Well, they They're going mid lane focus. Even earlier than I expected, actually. But Xiaoi Xiao expected it, had an early ward there. And that venture mid does mean that Rush is able to pick up that blue buff. A little bit of the greed pays off this time for Team Impulse. And Rush with the double buff. Whoa. Oh, <laughs> that one's not going to pay off. Two body slam, Flay, and maybe the death sentence over the wall. Lustboy does not guess correctly. They are getting a lot of damage down onto Dyrus. And because of the damage they did to Rush, they're thinking oh, of doing wow. a turret dive. I'm surprised Impulse is respecting this so heavily by backing away. Now there's no turret to save them. Flash forced by Rush because the Ignite from Lustboy. Yeah, two on three. These guys unwilling to defend it at all. Meanwhile, Dyrus can teleport back into the turret. So TSM, three lanes of experience being absorbed at the moment. Impulse shoved off. That explains that they were afraid of the Dyrus teleport. He'd been able to recall back from getting pressured, and it would have been a four on two under the turret. So, yep. There's the respect from Impulse. Good communication there to realize. And just, you know, good heads up play. But it means top lane turret's going to get pressured very heavily by Team Solomid right now. Yeah, really strong early game so far from TSM. Impulse having to react a little bit to it with the late arrival in top lane from Impact. The slight overaggression with Rush going back at the Gromp and taking a bunch of damage uh, just allowed some small windows of opportunity for TSM here. And you can see that with a 500 gold early advantage. Wow, gigantic early lead. Turret health also very big in their favor. Top lane for Team Impulse, nearly dead. Bottom lane for TSM, practically full. Also, Xiao Xiao in the mid lane. You can see only CSing with the wild cards, not moving up because he has no vision so early in the game. They lost track of Gragas, so he's playing it very, very safe. But it's pushed out as the problem. Bjergsen's Culling the way very cleanly, which means Shao Shao can only see us from the mid line, even with his Q. Adrian looks for the pressure on a wild coder, gets the stun. The nice double hop comes in as well. Ignite is burned. One more hit would pop Hyper, but Impact not going to hit it. So, again, focus mid lane here. They've got the pink ward already setting up this gank. Is Shao Shao playing safe enough? Nice dodge Whoa. in the chain. Using his ghost right as he saw Lost Boy, which gave him the mobility to dodge the chain. Saves him from either having to burn both summoner spells or dying altogether. Danger ping goes down, but top lane does not react. Oh. The roam from TSM gonna get there in time for Adrian. That's a really good boomerang toss, though. Impact okay, dodge catches. It. Yeah, that was cute. He jumped on Adrian that to cover awesome. more distance. <laughs> yeah. Top laner support synergy. Nar is actually pretty good <laughs> in two v two lanes. Yeah. Uh, as a pseudo AD carry. I remember uh, Nidalee used to be one of the better 1v2s back when she was a bit of a top laner, just because she was able to be ranged and kind of hit things from far away. Long range skill shot to get CS, long range auto attacks to get some as well. So far, so good for him. TSM, that lead has actually shrunk pretty significantly, actually, down to 200 here. Of course, a couple of waves still on the map makes that a bit of an awkward measure. Uh oh, he's going to miss one of these at least. <sighs> <laughs> Nothing you could do. It hurts your soul, freak. Hurt no, Shaoi Shao. Hurt Shaoi Shao more than that. This guy lives to farm. Sure. All right, he is level six though, um, so while he does live to farm, now he's built to gank. Mercury treads first item on TF as well. He wow. is a defensive TF to say the least. He's got a dot to skill shots, and also if he takes one, he's 
trying to give him that tenacity early on in the game. Well, it's the best way to get himself extra move speed. He's at 397 before any uh, other augmentations there, so at least some extra move speed from Runes and Masteries. Impact does not lose his recall. I can't remember the last time I saw a mid laner build Mercury Tread as his first item. Yeah. Um, anytime Keen played mid Hecarim, pretty much. Yeah, that was that's pretty much it because he'd always rush home guards. True. But will shall we shall also case. rush home guards? <laughs> oh god. There's always the chance. The home guard TF game. Eh? Not horrible, I suppose, but. Either way, definitely an uphill battle right now for Team Impulse's mid laner. Bjergsen going in pretty hard, thankfully for Xiao Wei Xiao. He missed the chain. Chugging on his flask as well. Definitely going to need to use that renewable resource. Stick in this lane and stay close in CS. He's doing a pretty good job considering how safe he's played and how many visits not only Santorin but also Les Boy made. Oh, yeah. Mid. And he's missing Ghost right now, so a summoner disadvantage for him as well. Shall we shall? Just the hydro powered flask, the renewable resource, the incomes. It. Wow, again. Shall we shall? So far, reading Bjergsen well and dodging the chains. On the guessing game so far, TSM have guessed mostly wrong. The hook over the wall when they went for Rush a while back, the two chains so far, but at some point, Impulse Luck will run out. And these kills might start coming through pretty soon for TSM. Yeah. Maybe the most surprising thing is that we have not seen Rush on our screens in the first four minutes, yeah, really, of the laning phase here. I mean, the, the Lee Sin, the classic Rush, not there in the early game. Right now, though, he's got focus on vision. Picked up a couple of wards on his back. See if he can actually get Xiao Wei Xiao the control that he needs in mid lane to free up the TF to make a move. I feel like the lane swap set Rush back a fair bit. When Santorin caught him and burned his flash, it took the aggression right out of Rush's early game, not wanting to make a big mistake that sets his team back. He'd already been caught by Santorin once w during some counter jungling and didn't want to let it happen again. Attempt mid number seven. Bring the house! Oh, the hook is going to land. Also, the Gragas is going to land. Pretty much everything. Xiao Wei Xiao flayed in, flashes the wall. In comes Santorin for another attempt. The Ignite. Gonna give the kill over to Lust Boy. The fight's still continuing. Teleport comes in from the TSM top laner. Adrian in a pretty bad spot. Flash over, but still caught up by Dyrus. Eclipse not gonna give enough their ability. Two kills over the team solo mid. Bjergsen's LeBlanc definitely off the ground. That, I don't know what the reason for that aggressive move from Xiao Wei Xiao was to move up towards Thresh for the yeah. stun card. He had been dodging previously when Bjergsen all in him towards Bjergsen to make him miss the, the chain from LeBlanc, but Les Boy throws it directly at his face, and Xiao Xiao steps right in. Cost this team a lot of control mid. A lot of more control mid as Rush gets cake and down. Xiao Wei Xiao shows up, but Dyrus on a lantern gets away pretty clean. The impact fairly close to Mega Nar, but taking a lot of damage. He's not tanking it. It's a Hex Drinker Nar. Boomerang Blade gets Lost Boy low, but no follow-up for Impulse. Mid lane pressure is the name of the game for TSM here. It's what you do against Twisted Fate. We haven't seen Twisted Fate come out in a while, but TSM is not missing a beat delivering this camp of the mid lane. It's the only way they get a numbers advantage is if they can take down Twisted Fate first, and they are exploiting that right now. He had done such a good job, though. He had already popped the Ghost. He could easily dodge a max range Thresh Hook, yet he runs straight forward. Mm -hmm. It wasn't even... Xiao Xiao was, hand was handling the pressure very well up until that point. You know, we asked if TSM could adapt well to the new meta. The smite top laners, how many jungle camps can you take down? Well, there's one extra camp for TSM. It's the mid lane camp. And <laughs> these players very good at getting to that one. So far, they have Chris smited Louis, Xiao Wei Xiao. Former NFL punter and LOL analyst with some <laughs> predictions before that first game and now calling this one for TSM in game three. Hey, so far it's good. Just pull a dash and, you know, put in your predictions most way through the series. And then, well, that's the wrong. longest, <laughs> the unfortunate part. This one, though, 2,500 gold on the side of TSM. On top of the stack deck bonus that Xiao Xiao gets on Twisted Fate, which is free gold. Mm -hmm. So limit is still very far ahead here. When, because we've been focused so heavily on the mid lane, we haven't really talked about Dyrus this game. On Maokai, on the tank, took the Lulu ban. He's up a large margin. Let's take a look at this dragon, though. He doesn't have teleport. Just down there tanking it. And he's able to grab the objective for the team. Yep. 
it's the lane swaps here for TSM. It's basically that TSM won the well. lane swap early on, and that's allowing them to focus the mid lane since they don't have to worry about Dyrus at all this oh. game. Xiao is in so much trouble. The Wolves save Xiao Xiao from the chain, meaning he lives through the ignite of Lust Boy, but TSM. Underneath the turret, still not able to get shoved around. These guys own the map right here. TSM looks like they're going to push in for mid-outer. And there is very little response from Impulse. Yeah, they're definitely behind the ball right now, Team Impulse. Santorin has the Trailblazer as well, so he benefits, benefits greatly. Just from that one little skirmish with Rush that set it behind, because he went with the Chilling Smite, much harder to farm. They've both committed to... Oh, oh a shout shout again. Adrian tanks one for the team. He's going to take a whole bunch of damage. Nice three-man stun, but will it be enough? Maybe. Yeah. But he chipped into the calling, but he still goes down. There's never enough people there for Team Impulse. TSM always outnumbering them. Gnar off in the top lane. Twisted Fate can never teleport into these fights because he is always the one being collapsed upon. And it is just going from bad to worse for Impulse here. TSM is playing this game textbook. I mean, the, they take the mid lane turret and they immediately set up wards all around the middle of the map and circle around while they know that Impulse have not had the time to set up vision to compensate for the lack of turret mid. And the warrior enchant Lisa and really not having an early impact as well. So everything that Team Impulse bet themselves on so far, really not working. Solomon doing an amazing job of pushing around Impulse and not letting anything go well. Apollo's getting farm. He's up 23 CS, but Sivir's not exactly Jinx or Cogmoth. It's not like the gold's going to make her a ridiculous late game here. Yeah, it's a 1,000 gold advantage for both Santorin and Bjergsen over their counterparts. And we know that Santorin and Bjergsen have awesome synergy when TSM runs that mid lane priority, which conveniently is the ideal thing to shut down the strength of this Team Impulse composition. Everything is just going to plan for TSM this game. Yeah. Darius as well, up a thousand gold over Impact. That's the big X factor. That's the reason this game is getting so out of hand, because we're used to Bjergsen and Santorin if they focus on mid to get mid going. Yeah, they're supposed to have their gold leads. <laughs> yeah. Darius and Turtle are a bonus. Well, yeah, I mean, Impact and Rush are supposed to have their gold leads too, and yet here we have a game where Rush hasn't done anything except die this game, and. Impact getting the worst end of the lane swap is still very far behind Dyrus. So, gold lead once again. Team Solomid last game, we were able to cash that one in pretty cleanly. Mm. Rush Nation's team fight won him the game off of Baron buff. Rush looks like he's trying to force a move up top. Now, Dyrus, very tanky at this point, has built early armor. And it just feels like this is going to be a very hard play to pull off. Uh, patience, though, they are just going to wait in that bush. For a long, long time. Darius also has Flash, by the way. Woo. Ooh, one bolt away from dying. TF ult comes in, looks like top Ult's lane going top. is the focus. Darius has the ulti on impact, not even close to Meganar, and he gets out yeah. with just a flash. Rush even kicked him. Yeah. And they lose complete mid lane pressure after that because Xiao Xiao committed for it. Not only did they have their jungler camp in the top lane brush, but they also committed their mid lane teleport, the first TF, the first real TF gank, and uh, TSM punished them for it. Wow, absolutely nothing done. This impulse lineup falling flat very heavily. Team still mid pressuring everywhere around the map. You gank free top, will kill bot lane and mid lane for this one. Wild Turtle looking to bounce the wave off the turret kill. This is quite a performance by TSM throughout. Oh. Well. Bit of damage impact. We'll switch back to Minion Dyrus. We'll give him some percent health damage, maybe on the chase toward Dyrus. It's a flashless Maokai. Impact has his, but no other Rush health left again. around. Rush very caught. He has nowhere to go. Bounced around by everybody. Pearson gets the kill. Rampage for the mid laner of TSM. All the alts for Rush right there, because TSM is free to go wherever they want. If I'm looking at this from Impulse's perspective, sometimes when you're preparing heavy, heavily for a lot of best of fives, which Impulse had to do, a best of five against Gravity and a best of five against TSM, and you have a strategy that you think is your ace in the hole because it works so well in practice, which honestly, based on the bans that Gravity had levied at Impulse and their confidence with his Twisted Fade comp, mm -hmm. I think Impulse thought this was their best team. I agree. Also, TSM threw out the bait in that first game by banning the Twisted Fade, being like, oh yeah, we're scared of it too. But maybe <laughs> this whole time, if you think you have a team comp that is your best, you oftentimes don't practice it as much as your other things because you think it is reliable. 
But what appears to be happening this time for Team Impulse, A, they're not used to things going wrong with the team comp, and B, even their early game strat didn't seem very well measured because they have no answer for this Gragas LeBlanc. I don't really feel like this is a comp issue. I feel like these are mistakes that were made by Impulse early in the game that have led them to this situation. Absolutely, and I think a lot of that does have to do, though, if they think this is their best team comp, how many Twisted Fate games has Xiao Xiao actually been getting in? How much has Rush actually been practicing Lee Sin recently versus Nunu? Yes, they are some of their best champions that they feel like they can fall back onto, but the individual play is not following through with this. The comp is fine, but they are getting outplayed. NTSM doing an amazing job with their play to keep Impulse down, and. The result of all that is a 5,000 gold lead at 17 minutes. Team Shulamid have aggressive pink wards. they got aggressive stealth wards here. They've got a ton of vision control. Well, Apollo Pops, don't think he's just afraid of getting hit. And spell shields. Ulti hits Lust Boy. They can stun up the TSM support. Ulti comes in. Oh my god, they lock up the entire TSM lineup. That's a one for zero. Will there be more? Adrian is no longer tanky. As look Ooh. at the damage coming through. Two more kills picked up for Solo Mid. And Xiao Wei Xiao Force went away. Can't for long. It's a 3 1 for TSM. Maybe it'll be four. Wow. Impulse committed super hard for that one on TSM. You can't blame them. They needed to try and create something. TSM just so far. Yeah, I think that's going to be dragon number two for TSM. Ooh, gonna take the red buff as well. Big bonus there for a Wild Turtle. He's getting right back into this game, evened up his CS. TSM looking very, very strong in game number three. A dash over the wall. Dragon gonna be secured with no problems whatsoever. Team Solomid looking at now a 7,000 gold lead 18 minutes in. One of the biggest leads we've ever seen in the North American LCS. It's a rare form to see a gold lead this big. Interestingly enough, Impulse had a similar gold lead against Gravity in their first best of five. Uh, the first game, actually. To be on the other side of that coin must not be nice for Impulse. Yeah, double flash by Adrian and Xiao Xiao to try and start this fight off because they had Meganar. So timing-wise, this would have been a great fight to take for Impulse if not for the giant gold deficit. Dyrus was completely unkillable when he TP'd in here, and the chase from Lucian LeBlanc was enough to destroy him. Yeah, they were able to take out one member of TSM, but the one member was Lust Boy, the Thresh. Mm -hmm. We did it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and you had mentioned how far ahead some of the TSM members were. The two first targets focused were kind of tanks. And, you know, like, you look at Lust Boy's gold, he's got as much gold, by the way, as Rush or Impact. That's a fairly beefy thrash, all things considered. Yeah, he Exalt wants to, to be on the front line. Look at him, he's building a righteous glory. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Already got one on Santorin. Want to add more engaged power. Team Solomid able to get whatever they want started. Mid lane tier two goes down for Lust Boys. You might down, might knock down bottom outer, but a better and bigger turret goes down in TSM's favor. Things continually going the red team's way. Makes this series... So, so interesting. I, the, the mind game sometimes of being blue side versus red side right here. TSM staying on red side to try to get this, the red side sweep with their red side strats here on the back side of the series. Now they go for Baron with pink ward control. No Twisted Fate ultimate up. Also, with the last game being prepped of TSM always just getting picks around the Baron pit, yeah. Impulse is ter <laughs> terrified to walk into their own jungle. Well, they're not even going to really try. Team Solomid picks up the 20 minute and 27 second Baron, and even still they can go for the picks. Adrian barely dodges the hook. And out they go, one of the fastest Barons ever. Ever. Well, in the, <laughs> oh, this, eight, this year, yeah. I mean, he used to spawn eight minutes, so, yeah, yeah. I mean, in the history of League of Legends, uh, <laughs> slow, but... I like it, I like it. The, the consistency of TSM, though, showing through here. Um, yeah. I mean... Not only do they get an advantage out of the lane swap, which historically Impulse, obviously they're a new team that came together. They had a lot of problems with lane swaps early on. Um, but e the best of five series, we expected TSM to take hits early. They usually actually take hits early on in best of five series, and then they adapt to them later on. Yeah. Throughout this game, they knew exactly what they were getting themselves into. A global teleport mid laner. Just continue to attack it. And it's yeah. the second game in a row that Team Solomit oh. have opted to counter pick mid lane for Bjergsen, give him an assassin in a good matchup, 
get the pressure lead over the enemy mid laner, and lo and behold, Solomid doing quite well for themselves. Bjergsen 5-0 and oh in this game. And mid lane turret nearly dying to the Baron buff. I mean, Impulse's coach talked about trying to keep morale up for these guys. He needs to start thinking about that five or ten minutes ago because this game is really getting out of hand. And honestly, Impulse needs to be thinking about their game four plans for a lot of this. It is nice to not consider yourself out of the game or anything, but their window for Twisted Fate to be effective with global pressure is long gone. And here comes a hard engage. Inhibitor turret goes down. There's the dive. Lee Sin already gone. Adrian going to follow him soon into the death chambers. And now Apollo, nice build to keep himself up. Impact gets a stun, but it's a three versus five. There's just no damage left. And in comes the hook. Shao Wei Shao going to fall. Apollo, the last one down. Down, and an eighth for Team Solomon inside of Impulse's base. And they have Baron plus a minion wave. This could be a sub 23 minute victory for TSM. Talk and about speed records, Freak. Yep. This one is definitely up there this season. Man, all right. Well, put them on Summer Games done quick because Team Solomid looking to get a 22-45 second, second, second Nexus turret down. But the respawns are so darn quick that they're going to try to fight Rush while uh, fighting the, the base. Tricky. And this could be actually Team Impulse holding their base alive for now. Our hopes of the record. Still up! Oh, left. wow. <laughs> Rush's oh, there's game more. Is not getting any better right here. Do it. He does. Hey! Yerkson lives. Oh, oh, the wild card gets him. In comes Impact. Team Impulse are not done. Wild Turtle goes down. Lust Boy is sure to follow once Gold Card comes back up. Xiao Wei Xiao shows him how it's done, and Lust Boy gets taken out. Dragon's up in a minute, though. Impulse, nothing much to do. Bot lane is open, maybe. Even with all those shutdowns, 10,000 gold. Two dragons to zero. It's a nice relief of the pressure by Team Impulse, but as far as the overall impact of this game, it would take about three more of those in order to turn the game around. Yeah. Rush trying to walk away. Dyra says, nope. Takes down one, two, and they're going to chain on this. Once again, these are fights that wouldn't be awful for Impulse if it wasn't for the giant gold lead. Grog assaulting a Meganar back into your team near a wall doesn't seem like the best thing to do. Yeah, Turtle had to flash. 10 health to a minion. Shall I shall? Calculated. Living on the edge. Easy. Well, Got to make things exciting. <laughs> Even the minions are dangerous for Team Impulse inside their base. <laughs> Waves are going to take a while, of course. Those in uh, Nexus turrets will never respawn, so always a threat of pressure, always a threat of split push here. they got to wait another three minutes for their inhibitor to come back up, but Dragon's already on the field. A lot TSM can do. There we go. Taking down Wild Turtle Solos it. Bonus movement speed, and the next target looks to be bottom lane. And if Impulse tries to defend this turret, I lose feel like nexus. the game ends. Yeah, they lose their nexus. Because TSM right. can dive in behind the turret with a Maokai, follow up with the Gragas ultimate, and Dyrus would be tanky enough to go in between that turret, I feel like. Well, here's all five of Solo mid. And they will go and knock down that bottom tier two, Bjergsen. Always buys that pretty early blue elixir. Gives him even more turret killing power. Nice to see for him. And now for inhibitor number two. A turret under fire. TSM go in. Bjergsen chunks out Adrian to one third. And they will not quite get the follow up damage. Santor gets a lantern out. He stays safe. But impact down to one quarter health himself. Wild cards wave clear a little bit. Solomid can nearly one shot the backline hook on impact. Oh. The culling almost takes him out. So many near kills for TSM, but it's actually Wild Turtle who goes down. Big mid lane minion wave coming in though. TSM forced to run. Honestly, oh. the wild cards did a lot of work there for Tip as they were defending that. Where's Xiao Xiao gonna go? Suicide! No, goes wait, a little bit no. too late in the hooks. Not gonna be gonna catch him. Rush comes in for Lust Boy. Couple more attacks will do him in. The Bjergsen gonna be close to getting this kill. Puts in the Q. Doesn't quite get it. Ignite won't take him out either. And it's two kills for Team Impulse. They've gotta go back and defend. And it's their tank, Adrian, who's sitting there wailing on minions, trying to keep it alive with impact. Santorin oh, is still not oh, man. died either. Santorin 0-0-12 zero, zero, here. Only missed out on two kills from TSM. Uh oh, here's Monson, Shao Wei Shao! Oh my god! Oh, they killed him! He got they back on Shao Wei Shao, but hey, worth it, IMO. 
uh, it's getting a little sloppy for TSM. Yeah. Honestly, they thought the game was going to be over at 22 minutes, and this has been a minor problem during the regular season before for TSM as well, where the game extended beyond the point where it should. Uh, here, the main part of this fight was actually earlier when Santorin took a bunch of turret damage and blew his ultimate, meaning there's no disengage for Team Impulse when this happens. Rush with a great kick, Apollo with a great flash auto, and then once again, no Gragas ultimate to engage or disengage. Chasing in as well, Bjergsen does have to respect the gold card when it's pulled, has to get out of there right away, and the chase from Twisted Fate was respected when Lustboy mistimed his hook. Here's a force to flash away. A little bit of cleanup for fun. Yeah, TSM really do need to regroup before going into the next game. Yes, they've won two in a row versus Impulse here, but only one game. Uh oh. So oh, gonna gosh. rush. Goodbye. Speaking of having to regroup, Rush had a rough time. Rush has had a fair one, six, and two. Every once in a while, we see Rush start a game with a whole lot of deaths. And that's. That's what happens when you have this playstyle, right? When things go poorly early and you keep trying to force it, they just, they're going to get worse and worse. Yeah, my made up stat for it is 80%. It works 80% of the time. This is the one game in the BO5 you're allowed to have this because you're now, get your backs up against the wall, Team Impulse. In a really bad oh, spot oh. this game, 99% of the times they do lose this one. TSM looking to close this one out and make it a two to one scoreline. In this best of five, Xiao Wei Xiao getting chased out. And mid lane about to get knocked down soon as well. Xiao Wei Xiao gets caught out by Dyrus. He could be a kill, and he is. Dyrus solos him from one quarter health, and now Impulse missing their mid laner, missing their wave clear. Here comes the push that might win the game. No turrets left on this path. Rush down to one third eight. Santorin says hello. Impact is Mega Nar. Nexus is open, guys. But yeah, it's an open Nexus. In he goes. Knocked him into the team. A little bit of damage comes through. The tankies are pretty big, though, and Apollo's going to be killed. Wild Turner does trade back. 80 carries are gone, but it's still a three versus four in TSM's favor. Down goes Impact. Four versus two. And now to the Nexus they go to close the game out. 29 minutes. Team Solo mid. Now one game away from their fifth consecutive North American LCS finals. Control of this series is back in the hands of TSM. You could see Impulse's adjustment here to a much different team composition, but Team Solomid is just playing so well right now. That it, one hiccup uh, down bottom, I think that less, or, uh, Loco Doco probably will bring that up mm. for the beginning of the next game. At the end of the game. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when it was 22 minutes in and you nearly killed the Nexus, and then seven minutes later you have to end the game. There's some sloppiness in that. Sure. But the first 22 minutes of that were pristine. Absolutely. Two thumbs up. <laughs> Five. Six total he put all of us in here. Like, honestly, yeah, it was a very, very good early game by TSM. The mid lane pressure, oh, look, it worked. And it, it's weird because you were talking about this at the beginning of the game. Like, all right, it's the standard TSM game plan. They're so good at getting Bjergsen ahead. They pick red side for game three, so they can counter pick in game two, game yeah. three, and game four here as TIP picked blue. And TIP blind pick a weak mid laner, and I feel like that has to change right away. That hurt. I again, mean, <laughs> again, I was just so disappointed with the, with the step up there for Xiao Xiao when he walked into the Thresh hook. I felt like it was doing so good, absorbing all of the pressure from uh, TSM for the vast majority of the beginning of the game. He was. Um, Xiao Xiao this year has been somewhat of an enigma. There, you yep. never know if he's going to be pulling out a great performance. Is he going to dodge straight at you? Yeah. Or? And every once in a <laughs> while, he just does something he should never do. Yeah. <laughs> Well, an unfortunate game then for Xiao Wei Xiao and the rest of the team getting kind of pushed around as well by Team Solomid. A great game three win for TSM and more for that win. Let's send it over to the analyst desk. Thank you, Freak. A second win there for TSM. 2-1 in TSM's favor now in the series. So the first question for me is mental fatigue, the mentality of Team Impulse coming off of two losses in a row after a pretty commanding first win of the series. Yeah, and mental fatigue is something I have a lot of experience with because I'm so used to losing. So when you're behind, <laughs> you have to make 
more decisions and harder decisions in a shorter span of time from when you're ahead, when you're in control of the game, you can either take your time or the decisions are easier because you have more opportunities. So when you're behind like Team Impulse is, actually there's a lot of mental fatigue and people will attribute this to like tilting or oh well they're choking, but really it's just you can't make that many decisions game after game after game and have them all turn out well. So when they're uh, back to the wall and they only have to lose one more game to get out, it gets increasingly harder to make good decisions as the series goes on. They also didn't kind of capitalize on what was going well for them in game one. Like, the fact that they decided to change their strategy is absolutely baffling to me. Like, they haven't run a TP Smite top laner since then. I understand you want to run TF mid, right? You're banning Cassiopeia for that reason. But if you want that strategy, why would you pick starting blue side games two and four? Why, why don't you just pick red side and get it as a counter pick? Because you're gonna get counter picked by Bjergsen, and he's gonna play LeBlanc into you every time. Like it's just absolutely strange to me that TIP came into this with something that looked like a ton of prep for red side. Then when they're playing blue side, the side that they chose, they just drop the ball mm -hmm. over and over again so far. And I just want to talk a little bit about Xiaoyi Zhao because I feel like even if TIP loses, I got to give this guy some credit before it's too late. This guy is so good. I feel like he is a player with amazing mechanics, as you saw. He's dodging everything, hitting every skill shot that he needs to be. Really quick fingers. Also, amazing game sense. You can tell when he's playing TF and Karthus, he knows exactly what's going across the map at all times. The only problem is I feel like he's on the like either a wrong team or a team that is not built to help him. He can possibly win every 1v1 matchup against Bjergsen. He's just not given the opportunity because TIP is not giving him any resources. Mm -hmm. And when he does get a lead uh, in CS or gold or even in pressure, TIP doesn't help him drive it home. So he doesn't really get to push Bjergsen in and make him useless. Um, and it's just really TSM bullying him around despite the fact that he's such a great player. And you could see all the resources TSM put in there. They were like, all right, winning matchup for Bjergsen last pitch. Last pick, it's like, boom, let's throw Lustboy into mid, Santorin into mid, and everybody's just throwing all the skill shots at him, right? He can only dodge them for so long. That's a, I, It's a very interesting point, Doublelift, about the fact that he is a mechanically skilled player but isn't given the resources to work with because we saw so often he would push it in, wild cards out with TF, push the lane in, and then just go sit by his turret. He literally had nothing else to do, so unless they give him a good ultimate to another lane, he's rendered ineffective. And, and the most hilarious part to me is, critically, this is the guy who's getting counterpicked all three games so far in this series, and he just doesn't care. Like, he's just playing out of his mind, actually. The fact that he's even able to go even in CS or pressure with Bjergsen, and, and TSM is a team that pressures mid almost always with Lustboy and Centaurin, just highlights the fact that he's just playing so well in the series. So then, I think, the, where we go from there is, needing to, uh, or does wishing the team impulse would utilize his ability to stave off that mid lane pressure for so long because he did do it for so long. Kobe gave him praise for having played that lane so well until he walked into that hook from Lust Boy. But through all that time, TSM is funneling resources mid and Impulse wasn't capitalizing elsewhere on the map knowing that they could put uh, man advantages in other lanes. Yeah, and what I will say is, if you kind of break down Team Impulse's performance so far in this series, Apollo and Adrian have had little to no game impact. Or, I would say Adrian has decent game impact, but Apollo is really doing almost nothing in these games in terms of pressure. If you compare his pressure in the map compared to Wild Turtle, he's almost always at a disadvantage. What you'll see is there's a potential for game impact coming from mid lane that they're just not tapping into, and instead they're just forcing plays in the jungle with Adrian and Rush, and they're just trying to snowball that into Impact's lane, and that's a really predictable playstyle. Xiaowei Zhao is also locked into a predictable playstyle. He's just going to be farming mid lane. They need to change something up fundamentally about the team in this next game if they want to win. Yeah, and it wasn't working for them when they were like, we're going to have jungle and top pressure when they got shut down because it was predictable in TSM. We're like, all right, invade him early. Keep him down. Keep the lane swap going. Like That was really in TSM's favor. They won the lane swap pretty handily. And that's where I want to make the transition over to TSM because that first game... Dyrus went down 0-2 in lane very early, and we saw a lot of that be the reason why the TP smite Shivana, which we said worked out very well, but Impact having that leg up over Dyrus allowed them to affect the rest of the map. In these next two games, Dyrus having a much more solid performance, and we pointed both him and Lust Boy out as being you know, people that, although they're not looking for tons of farm, tons of damage, and, and huge plays, their consistent performance throughout these, the rest of this series is going to be kind of what seals the game for TSM. So getting Dyrus into a comfortable position here, I think, is the way that TSM secures the series. Yeah, and I feel like a lot of that is TIP's letting TSM play their own game. 
TIP is not dictating the pace like they normally do. Like the fact that they have the TP Shivana as a strat coming in, the fact that they're letting Santorin have this pressure jungler that can also transition into a tank in late game fights is something that TIP need to reevaluate. You cannot let TSM play their own game because they're going to beat you at it. Yeah, and I think the thing that's really throwing Impulse off is just how great Santorin's playing. Like yeah. this guy is mm -hmm. playing amazing this series, and a lot of that has to do with the fact that he's been getting Gragas these last two games, and a lot of people underestimate that champion in terms of game impact. I mean, Santorin's hitting great ulties, great body slams, he's snowballing early game every game so far with Gragas. Um, Bjergsen's just expected to play amazing. Turtle and Lustbar are holding up and doing well late game. Like, this is just a team that's playing their game. Yep. Pressure's on uh, Impulse, definitely, mm -hmm. here going into Game 4. Now, Team Solomid are just one game away from locking up their spot in the finals. We'll see if they can get it done, or if Team Impulse can push the series to five games. Don't go anywhere. Guys, I'm so hungry. Same. Oh my god. I'm hungry for kills. I'm so hungry, dude. Can we end this fast? Gonna get the kill over to Lost Boy. The fight's still continuing. Teleport comes in from the TSM top laner. Adrian in a pretty bad spot. Flash over, but still caught up by Dyrus. I think we can still fight. We can still fight. We can still fight. Hide them all. Go on, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go. Yeah. Going. I'm going on impact. Wait out, wait out, wait out, wait out, wait out, wait out, wait out. Follow, follow. Three seconds. Gonna follow him soon into the death chambers, and now Apollo, nice filter to keep himself up. Impact gets a stun, but it's a three versus five. A little bit of damage comes through. The tankies are pretty big, though, and Apollo's gonna be killed. Wild Turner does trade back. 80 carries are gone, but it's still a three versus four in TSM's favor. Team Solo mid, now one game away from their fifth consecutive North American LC.